Okay, so uh, timers, chronometers, and clocks is the name of this part. Uh, so just well, it's basically in the in the thing. I want to be able to. I want to create a couple of classes, helper classes, and clocks to help track time, especially for like uh, loops. Trying to figure out like number of frames per second, or to just like determine the length of time it takes to do like certain subsections of code or just other old fashioned, uh, a, a dilated clock, a clock that runs at like a different speed to real time, like what a clock that's running at half speed or 10th speed or twice the speed, so on and so forth. Uh, so this will be something that really, okay, I'll just, Paste it in here for the time being. I'll work on it internally here, or here actually, really. And then we'll modify and we'll parse it out to its own files as required. So, the first thing we'd need is, of course, the chrono library, which brings in some very basic clocks. If I can figure this out, CPT reference. And bring up Chrono. Do 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 do. Whoop. Uh, well, this is expanded since the last time I looked at it. Time, 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 time. Can I not see it? Day and time, the chrono library. Yes, so it already has a few basic clocks. Yeah, system clock, a steady clock, a high resolution clock, and some other newer ones. UTC, atomic time, GPS time, file time. Okay. Interesting. So the first one I want is something that's called, that's a program clock. Not very useful. Well, useful enough. Which basically measures time from the beginning, the start of the application, which will be almost the same as <clears throat> a regular, any other clock really, except the fact that it's starting point instead of 1970 or the startup time of the computer or Real time is just the startup starting of the application. So, uh, I guess we'll just program clock, like faux program clock or something like that. Hmm. I'm going to just move this over. System clock has a bunch of using times, the duration type, seconds, days, rep, period, duration, and time point. Okay. Oh. Oh, no, move the, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. I will just slightly shift this over so I can actually still keep it on track hand here. So uh, we need a duration. Uh, we shall just use as nanoseconds. Uh, using re representation, uh, ratio, what's this? A ratio type representing the tick period of the clock in seconds. Same as that.
time point is based on time point program clock and the duration we have here. Uh, sorry, no, that clock, that clock. Is it a steady clock? If I base it on the standard chrono steady clock, it is. So I will, yeah, I, I'll do that. I want the program clock to be going back and forth with like a high precision clock. Those are usings, these are basics, and then we'll have an implementation. Which will be have to be some kind of like anonymous namespace. Because it it'll have to be from the start of the application all the time, which means I can only have one. Based off a steady clock. And it'll be like whatever the time, because this will be created, this will inherit the, uh, the steady clock time point when it's initialized at the start of an application, sometime during the initialization of the application when it's all being loaded into memory, which is as close to the start time of the program as I'm going to get, which just would leave, uh, that now it will accept returning the time point time point, which is initialized as basically this minus C program start time. Mm hmm. So I create a, uh, well, I don't even have to create it. I just need to like, um, oh, log. Nanoseconds, seconds, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's a massive number because it'll be nanoseconds. And that's on the wrong uh, application. Start that one. Exit out. It was definitely nanoseconds. Uh, convert this to seconds. Can I do that? No. Uh, duration cast into standard chrono 
milliseconds. That I can read. Quite. One, two, three, nearly four seconds. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see if I can uh, basically exit right away. It's there. 1.4 seconds. Half a second. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is, well, I mean, <laughs> that kind of works right off the bat. Let's uh, stick it in here. Twenty tax, yeah. That that down down. We need a and source. Ah, nope, nope, wrong one. Target sources. This we paste these guys in there. Not much, but pay much, but it's honest work. Ah, oh, documentation later. Uh, we need to add it to add a subdirectory. It's before log. I don't know why it jumped. Interesting. Oh, yes. Program clock. Tests later. Just stage these guys. And there you go. I basically created my own little. Uh, clock based off another clock admittedly but it's basically a pretty much the same as I can put that up we put program clock on here same thing a uh, bit of a different ordering rep duration rep period duration
period. Oh, I perhaps if I did that, there we go. spelling it correctly helps. I can't do. Wait, hold on. In the documentation, it's definitely in this order. But I need duration to be first. Uh, sure. Whatever. Do that instead. It's a struct. It's all public. Okay, uh, next. What do I want? Period timer. Sounds about right. Uh, or perhaps a little um, easy clock. Or okay, I'll 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 create something called an easy clock. Because I've every time I've used uh, Corona libraries, it's been kind of a pain because they're a little disingenuous. This will just be like a easy, simple wrapper around and make it a bit easier to use for looping code. It'll be templated too. Yeah, would it have? To? Yes, it would have to be. Reset. We need a um, time elapsed function. It will be templated so you can choose a duration. Similar for the current time. Mm -hmm. I don't know actually about the CEO current time. Well, no, no, yeah, yeah. Last time point. And I'm not sure what that is. Something like that. These will be public functions. Down, down, down. I don't need to export this because it is a template type. So there's no real point doing that. Um, it'll be clock type time point. 
type name prior to dependent. Okay. Auto, auto, Do that monstrosity. So this is the last point. Totally sure. Never am. Okay. When we're updating the clock, anyways, uh, this I do will know. So the m last time equals the m current time. And current will become whatever clock type is now. Then we have that's the new elapsed time. Uh, if we reset, um, last clock time equals now. We reset in clock, which basically means we're resetting it all to the current time. And the last, like that. Elapsed time elapsed between the two is. Duration cast of the duration type requested. Current minus M last. Similar here. But this is just the current time. So undeclared identifier. Oh yes. Need that. Uh, when we start easy clock, we need to initialize it with uh, last. The now time, and then m current. is M last. So defaults, basically it's almost like it was reset. Probably could just call it reset instead. Yeah. Okay, so the last, and this just returns these. We kind of have some very basic types. So for easy system clock equals clock of uh, uh, standard chrono system clock. Uh, 
And same thing for the other two types of clocks. So that comes along steady clock, high resolution clock. Now I could probably give a go with these ones, but I don't know if these are even implemented in half these. Um, Uh, it's not there. Of course it is. Clock. I don't know what these when these guys were introduced with. Clock time. Chrono. Chrono. Feature. Mm. No, it's too old. What are these? These are just type deaths for something else, probably, right? No, they're very... Sp okay. I don't know if they're in yet, so I'm not going to bother with them. I'll just leave it with the three basic ones from uh, C++11, then. Okay, give these a go. So I can uh, do, okay, pro, easy, easy, easy. Steady clock. It starts. We do like easy clock. Okay, well, no, it starts off like that. So we can just at the end, when we uh, leave the loop, Say easy clock dot um, update. So we update the clock and then we get how long it was between the two. Um, time in main loop. Uh, we'll just use milliseconds. Easy clock dot. Elapsed type is standard in the seconds. Dot count. One, two, three. Okay. A very nice and easy clock to use. Easy. I can also just do uh, nice and easy uh, dot current time point. Current time, which is when it was last updated, which will be like a massive number, I'll bet. Six thousand seconds or so. So I'm guessing this steady clock is probably from the computer boot up time. About an hour. Yeah, it's about right. Okay, easy clock. Easy clock is easy. Don't need this yet. Okay. Um, do I need a period timer? A time tracks period of time. Or is it basically the same thing? Yeah, it's basically the same thing.
Okay, a dollar, a da okay. So I can still probably do a dilated clock. That's the interesting one. I presume. Don't wanna. No, I'll just do it in line first. Can start at an arbitrary time. Of course, it has to be able to start at an arbitrary time because time works differently for this guy. By default, starts at zero, time dilation is real time. Um, need to be able to update the clock with real time information. So update clock with external time. Last time. We need to be able to retrieve the time or yeah. Set we need to be able to set time. Arbitrarily. Set epoch. Not set time, it's set epoch, or no, 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 I'm setting the time. There's no necessary, there's necessarily, there is not necessarily an epoch. I mean, there technically would be, but the time is the time since epoch anyways. So you can figure out the epoch from the time, current time anyways. So yeah, we can just actually do this time like that. Would it be? No, it is. Yeah. Dilation. Elapsed inside the dilated clock. Give me a couple of the internal clock. need to okay because oh yeah, yeah. 
because time can move extremely slowly. Like I could probably set this like, you know, time moves at 0.1% of uh, reality or something ridiculously small like that. It would mean that I can't rely on just contextual information of the current of the time elapsed or current time. Because if, if the time that's elapsed is like a millisecond and I'm trying to go at like one th ten thousandth of that t speed, then of course it's always going to come up as zero and the clock will never advance, even though it has to. Technically, after like 10,000 milliseconds have passed, then the nanosecond will occur. But if I'm updating it like every few milliseconds, I'll never get above zero. So, I need a bunch of extra information that will determine when on the real. Yes, yes. So, I need to be able to say this clock will advance at this time in the future on the real clock that I'm at, that I am attached to or that I'm getting my information from. So um, can I use an array? Let's do some of that C++ stuff. Hmm. Okay, I want to need like a set of times, won't I? Um, would this be public? These don't have to be public, do they? No. I have four of these. We'll say it checks every one second. Real time. These are the real times. So these will be all con properly converted. Uh, the number of check times. I have both like the last time, the time, the next external clock time, in which case the internal clock is updating and the internal clock dilated clock at last check, dilated clock at last check, internal, okay, no, internal clock. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ah, oh, excellent. It crashed. 
what I need to see. Zero. It's not time dilation anymore, it's dilation. Ah, yes, if I change dilation, I'll need to reset that every so often. I'll need to reset that immediately, actually. If I change the external clock I'm based off of, or I change the dilation, because of course the timings are going to be uh, different then. Now for the interesting one, the update clock. Just copy and paste it a bit easier. If, yeah, if dilation is 1.0, it's real time, then just update the intro clock by the same amount. Otherwise, if it's zero, then just don't move it at all. You're not, oh, right, the language server crashed. Reopen that. That's the Windows one. Uh, doesn't like, like that at all. No time has passed. Return those two cases. Otherwise, we're going to go through this large mass of logic, which is going to start with which uh, is elapsed times uh, the dilation. Convert it back into into nanoseconds because it's a float. And the internal clock will be moved by the last time. Now we need to do the checks with real with the real time clock to make sure we're not accidentally losing time or advancing by too much. Either way. Well, can it go backwards? Uh, if you're not using a steady clock, I'll assume a steady clock or something good enough.
Hmm. Yeah, okay. I need to go through these by index, don't I? Or hmm, maybe I can do like a pair of these guys all the time. Hold on. Where was I? Oh, no, it's, it's in the same file. Just get rid of these guys then. I can do a pair or two separate arrays. No, let's do a struct. Which is standing of next external time. these two and I will put this guy in instead. Clock checks. Then we could do for auto and iterator of and clock checks. Oh no, I can't quite do that, can I still? Because I still need the index so I can actually check against the uh, reference values up here. Hmm. But these are const expressions. So they are one, two, three, four. I don't know if he'll be able to figure that out. Probably not. Still size T zero is less than it's probably be unrolled. By the compiler, maybe depends on how much is in here. Actually, wouldn't it? So the idea is like if a previous clock value, like if a larger clock value modified time, then these guys need to be fully need to be reset. So like this guy will be hit most of the time. Then he will be reset, then he'll be reset, and so on and so forth. Try to keep time as good as possible. So that if there's a if there's a fail if there's a um a problem or an issue with like the smaller time scale not correctly catching uh due to floating point errors or just the fact that the values are so small, then there's a good hope chance that a much larger time jump will still will still be able to catch it right i think i'm hoping one so like 50 milliseconds to one second time jumps like the, because uh what one second jumps will catch like really infinitesimally small time values even on for nanoseconds yeah, 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 yeah.
check dot the local no the internal Check times at i. Yeah, so this is the time currently, but that's the next time we want to check it. If the external time has passed, the, the next external uh, check time for this value. Yes. I got to stop typing out this freaking uh, clock scale duration thing. I need to actually put it in here. Like, uh, was it, was it uh, duration? I think it was duration, right? Yeah. Duration is that. So we'll just freaking going to use that everywhere. Instead, me typing this out all of the freaking place. I swear, swear on me, mum. Duration. Bam, 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 da, 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 Not there and not there. Okay. Um, what was I doing? Ah, uh, yes, external time minus. The clock check for the next external. For this one. C check times I should be able to just disappear into compliment into nothingness. Hopefully, it is a constant expression. If the time it is, is not the time that it, if the current time is not 
It should be time. Yeah, we'll put it that way. The internal clock is not the time it should be. Then we're going to have to update the clock to fix uh, the last time or the should be time. Modified time equals true. at the next time we're going to be checking this. And if we go through all this, then we reset checks equals false, because we've checked them all. Right? No, only if we, yes, only if we go through into this guy. Right. So outside, just outside of this for loop. Yeah, 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 right here. functions time I believe which is just oh, elapsed okay just copy these guys right down like that we need to do this so that they actually have scope That's why they're complaining so hard. Last time, time, dilation, dilation. So much time has elapsed. Simple enough. If we update time, then in internal clock is time, we need to lapse time equals zero. Initialize to zero and, and reset. We need to reset the checks. And it's basically the same deal with the dilation. We need to reset. We don't need to do these guys. I don't even know if it builds. Here we go. Yes, it does. Does it work? Is another question. So uh, to begin with, we'll add in an easy clock. So I have the real time that I can compare it against. Steady clock.
like that. Account like that. Make sure that works at least. Save it. Okay, hold on. It's, it's still trying to come on. It doesn't take that long to actually format. Eighteen thirty. Okay, we have that. Next, we want to do dilated clock. Um, external time. How do I set the initial external time? Oh, no, 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 no. Because, yeah, reset clocks is true. So it just starts on the first one. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't do any calculation. It just sets it right there. And then there it doesn't do any of this stuff. Unless, of course, it's dilation of one or zero, in which case these other clocks don't even matter. Yes, 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 okay. Not, um, just whatever. Do I even need elapsed time? If I'm keeping track of the old time. Right now I'm not. Hmm. We'll just do easy two. Easy two is going to be updated every time. Like that. Dilated clock. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's update clock. Let's change that to just update. Uh, number of name time. An easy clock, really. What did I call it? Current time. template it up. Okay. So dilated, um, I'm not even checking dilated clock anyways. I should do that now. Especially since it starts at zero on like a program clock. Actually, that's true. Yeah, whatever. Let's 
seconds.count. Okay, right now they are the same. Now if I do a dilated clock with a uh, It's not even here, it's up here. Nanoseconds of zero. Where am I? There it is. Of zero and a dilation of, z of zero as well. Should advance absolutely not at all. And indeed it doesn't. Now, because this is basically being called less than a millisecond, like this is speeding along at a ridiculous rate, doing like a 0.1, so I want it to go at 10% of regular speed. Normally this would just be a whole bunch of zeros, but with this clock, it's literally one-tenth the speed. One one hundredth of speed. I am a time lord, perhaps. Thirty seven. Quite nice. What if I change this to nanoseconds? I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How low can I go? One one thousandth. I don't think I can go much more than that because my uh, dilation. My largest check is only once. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's still going. Hmm. Hmm. I get, yeah, it's, it works. I laid to I'm actually surprised it does. I'm. There's probably something wrong with it. I don't know what it is yet, but it will show up. Actually, does this even have? Yes, it does. Not easy clock, but this clock, this magical clock. This is what it's all about here. So it won't, uh, it's not duration we want. I want to be able to return it in custom types, much like uh, on the easy clock. That's, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
finish moving this stuff out first. Save that, uh, be able to export it. Like Clang D decided to break again. Fantastic. I also need a ray. No other specific types, it looks like. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, if I close this up, reopen it, get the Clang D back, how does it appear when I'm doing like... dot... Actually, first of all, it doesn't even exist right now, since I moved it. Include it back in, clean up, clean up, cleaned up. It's, it says it's a duration type. Not great. But it does work right now. Okay, it works again, almost. Let's see check times. Ah, uh, okay. So that would actually have to be back in the public area. I can't, I can't hide that. So it would have to be public. Unless I was to... Um, No, leave it public. Let's uh, fix this up to be. Place them all. Rebuild. Undefined reference to. What? Update time. Oh, I didn't even add it to be compiled. Yes, that is true. Okay, still going. Oops, move it over. At one one thousandth. So however long it was. Eight and a half seconds, eight milliseconds. Can I go even lower? One ten thousandth. I have to wait at least ten seconds for it to show up, wouldn't it? Eight 
I only waited eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Okay, that should be enough. Uh, where is it? Where is the application window? There it is. Yes. And then if we wait for 20 seconds, grab a drink. I'm assuming it's been more than 20 seconds. Wow. That's one hell of a time dilation. And it works all right. And I presume just going like faster than ridiculous. Let's go 1,000, 10,000, whatever. Ridiculously fast. And bam. Yeah, it really goes fast. Just about. Hmm. As long as it keeps resetting and properly fixing itself. The self-correcting clock, self-correcting dilated clock. That's pretty neat. Okay. I think I'll be pretty okay with that. Now, documentation. Oh, I was going to change this up. So that this can be uh, whatever elapsed in time can be returned as custom durations. So rather than this be and it's not an export function. You can say what type you want it to be returned as so duration type. Returns as that type. Duration cast of duration type of an elapsed time. By default, though, it's that. Same deal with time. Except that's an internal clock. Line definition of elapsed. Yes, you're right. They don't exist anymore. Not sure if Windows would be happy with this. I mean, what internal <clears throat> internal clock and elapsed time are just plain old data types. So you don't need a DLL interface. They're just like uh i believe they're just like an alias of a ratio type which is just a bit which just boils way down into like a 64 bit unsigned integer value probably or 32 bit depending on the platform i presume 
I love your 32 bit nowadays. I change that to be initialized value. Okay, I'm gonna make it like that. So at least externally, it looks like And then internally we could, ah, whatever, who cares? I'm just gonna do this. Right? And then... In here, we'll put it here. It'll just be in the source file, this one compilation unit. Okay. Now, that's three clock types. I may want a longer dilated clock type though. If I'm not, because right now this clock is assuming I'm basically always going to have the elapsed time with me every single time. Like I'm running, I'm updating this clock every tick cycle or whatever. I may not have that guarantee. So I'll need like a, a wrapper type. Or, um, yeah, just say something that's sort of this. Related long clock. Where it just only accepts the external time. It doesn't take time and elapsed. Because it'll have a local copy. Yes. It'll have a local copy of the time. And from that, it'll determine the elapsed time and then pass it on back into. Uh, the other clock. Which means the original one has to be made not public. Keep forgetting to add that. <clears throat> Use the explicit. It would be almost the same as this, except an extra nanoseconds. Extra 
internal clock time. Update, which takes standard. Time. This will allow us to change it if we want to change the clock that we're based on, which will basically also do like the reset uh, times kind of thing. Reset the, cl uh, the clock checks. Yeah. Just okay, get rid of the clock, just external time, external time, external time. That should always be first before set. It's always getters than setters. You're more likely to use a getter than a setter. Hmm. That would probably mean I'd have to make something protected. Or. Well, no. No, no, no. This is. Okay. Add the export macro at least. Yes, 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 yes. Not sure why you're not looking at it. No member named update. Oh, because it's not, I got rid of the clock. It's just update. Yes. Wait. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh still in the browser. Okay, my mind is fried. I gotta finish this up and get some sleep. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Header, this is the header I'm looking for. Grab this, copy it in. Scope it. Get rid of these guys. That, that, that. External time must be passed into these. Um, get the base. Internal time. Look at the wrong one. He added the compilation. Yes, it has that. Grab these. Scope. Scope and scope. Uh, 
update this. The trailing return type. Make it a little bit more readable. Set. Crazy. Ah, oh, come on. I'm there. Mm -hmm. Wrong one again. It's a private member. That's okay. That's okay. Private. If I could actually copy the right thing, and reset clock checks. Reset checks. Do that. Reset checks. What's that? Quite direct access. Okay. Just to be sure. And they'll just open up the file and they'll go nowhere anyways. Okay, we just do the same thing as this, except instead of 1000, it'll be like 0 0.01. Rather than doing this, later to the long clock. Yeah. 
it's easy to note that. And we do this at the end. So we just do a whole bunch, and then we don't actually. Let's give that one a go. Long clock. Nope. Didn't work at all. Hmm. That's just not working. Stelvin. Let's go into Oh, yes, of course it's not working. I'm not even calling the base class function. Oh, wow, I just, ugh. Last external time equals external time. I just typed the, the freaking doc, the comment, without actually dude, making the call. Let's try it again. Now it works again. Okay, I'll just come put these in then. Program clock. That. We added chrono.
Let's put them up. See what they come up with. Don't really want these guys to be here. And I'll call it there. Well, the CICD happens. <laughs>